All right, hi everyone. So we're gonna be continuing today our discussion about classes and objects. And in this case, we're gonna be talking about object creation. All right, so chapter six in the Java 8 Fundamentals book is a good place to go if you want to have some more information on this topic. All right, so let's talk about object creation. So again, we've been talking about uh, these sort of generic uh, classes or these sort of basic examples of classes, um, point and person. So here we're going to start with an example here of point, P1. So we have an object called P1. And we use the constructor point uh, with input arguments 2 and 4, so x value and y value. And, uh, and again, we're creating an object of type point. There's your constructor. And then we're going to print out um, point 1. So what does that do? Well, kind of something funny. So if I say system out print line P1, then I might get something like this. Now, if you do it, it'll look a little bit different. Uh, these numbers will be a little bit different after that. But what that is, it's it's the address, okay? It's the address, the location in uh, in memory where that object P1 is stored. So again, if you think of a, an SD card like that, uh, these objects would be stored somewhere inside of the SD card and, and are retrieved, are written to and, and retrieved um, as needed, all right? And and the location is, well, that, that address right there, with that bizarre looking number right there. So um, that's what happens if, if you try to print out the object P1. But really what we want to be doing is printing out attributes of P1. So instead what we would do is we do something like a system.out.println and then you have your double quote there that ends with a double quote there. That means we've got a string. That string is going to begin with a parenthesis. It'll end with another parenthesis. And then we use the concatenation, this addition right here, right there and there to say, right after the parenthesis, I want to see the X value of P1. Then I'm going to put in a little mini string right here, which will be a comma and a space. And then I'm going to put a concatenator there and another one right there. And I'm going to want the want to have the value of, of the Y characteristic of P1 printed as well. Okay. And so it would print something like this, where that's the X value, that's the Y value, and then there's your comma and space, and there you've got your closing parenthesis and your opening parenthesis. Okay. So that got placed right there, and that got placed right there. And that's typically what we actually want to be printing out when we are looking at our objects. All right, so a constructor may only initialize some attributes and leave others uninitialized, okay, when we're constructing. So here's an example right here. We got a class called person tester, and in it we've got our main method right there. And we're going to construct Jim, Jim the object from our constructor like here. And we're gonna say that Jim's gonna ha have an age of 50 and has nationality of BRI. Now we can initialize Jonathan with, so sorry, we can create an object uh, called Jonathan of type person. Here's our constructor right here. And we're gonna assign a nationality of Canadian or can and 65 as an age to Jonathan. Now from there, we want to create another object. This time we have an object called Alan. And so Alan, instead of, of spe specifying what Alan's nationality is going to be like we did in the case of Jim and Jonathan, we're going to say that uh, Alan's age is 75 and uh, Alan's height is 1.80 meters, which we didn't do in the case of Jonathan and Jim. We also have Mark here. And so Mark can have uh, can be initialized to all four of those really important parameters, age, nationality, uh, weight, and height. Now you'll notice that we only did that for Mark, we didn't do it for Alan, we didn't do it for Jonathan, and we didn't do it for Jim. The other values will basically be initialized to uh, default values, okay, like a zero. All right, so what happens if we visualize this? Well, if we visualize it, we take a look at what happens to Jim. Jim is a person, okay? So uh, uh, the object type is person. The age was specified, the nationality was specified, right? And our weight and height, though, were not speci uh, specified, so they'll be initialized to zero. Jonathan, same deal. Age was specified, nationality was specified, but weight and height were not. Alan, on the other hand, 
had a nationality that was uh, initialized to null, age to zero, because no age was specified, but weight, oh, I guess it was weight, not, that wasn't age, it was weight, ha, huh. um, it was weight, 75, not age, and, um, and, and then height was 1.80. And then finally, mark, everything was specified. We had age, we had nationality, we had weight, and we had height. So a constructor may only initialize, sometimes will initialize some attributes and leave others uninitialized. All right, so we can see this again right here. So point P1 is an object with three and four, X is three and four is Y. Point two, same thing. Oh, there should have been a comma right there. We would have had uh, negative three and negative two initial, uh, values initialized. Point three, on the other hand, we're not initializing y. We're saying that we want to initialize x to a value of 5, but we're going to go with default values for y. And then with point p4, we say that we don't want to specify what x is, but we're going to specify what y is with an initial value of negative 7. All right, and here's how it sort of looks right here when we visualize it. So we have an object p1. Uh, that should have been a type point, not person. Uh, x is set to 3, y to 4. Uh, that should have been type point, like that. P2, okay, is negative 3 and negative 2 at initialization stage. Then, whoops, that should all be point. Okay, so point, we are initializing x to 5, but we're not saying anything about y. So y gets set to zero, it's default. And uh, p4, again, this is type point. And x is going to be set to zero because we're not specifying it, so it goes to its default. And y gets set to negative seven like that. All right. So when using the constructor, we want to make sure that we pass valid argument uh, values. The type of each argument, is it a string? Is it an integer? Is it a double precision floating point? must match the corresponding parameter type. So we have to have an, uh, an integer for age, a string for nationality, okay? Like that. If we do point three and four, uh, that matches that we want numbers in the two input argument positions, okay? When creating an instance, uninitialized attributes implicitly get assigned the default values. Typically, things like zero or null. So we set uninitialized attributes properly using, sorry, properly later. Okay. So if we don't initialize it initially, um, using the constructor, we will use mutators or set type methods. So for instance, you can see here we set up Jim to have an age of fifty and a nationality of British. And then afterwards, we apply two set or mutator methods. So Jim, we set weight to 85, set height to 1.81. All right, and there you have it, object construction. Mm -hmm.